If you're looking for live local music from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, you came to the right place. Welcome to Hugh Shows. The Hugh Show. It's a lot of fun. He's got all the answers. Yeah, he's got them written down. So let's all watch a Hugh Show till he gets to number one. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Hugh Twyman, and I have been writing a music and photography blog in Pittsburgh for over a decade. Check me out at HughShows.com and follow me on Twitter at HughShows and Facebook. On this episode, my special guest is Margaret Welsh, music editor for Pittsburgh City Paper, who will be discussing her musical tastes with a segment I call First Last. But first, my musical guest is Andre Costello and the Cool Miners, a folk rock band whose songs dance between the upbeat and the melancholy, often landing on both at once. Performing a brand new, as yet to be released song, please welcome Andre Costello and the Cool Miners with Kinda Makes You Feel Good. I'm here with Andre Costello of Andre Costello and the Cool Miners, who just performed Kind of Makes You Feel Good, which mm -hmm. is a yet-to-be-released uh, song. It's a brand new song. How old, when did you write it? Uh, that song is actually one of the newer, newer songs that I have. So I, after your last album. Yeah, I mean, the songs, like, the scope of the, uh, like, the record creation, they're, like, some of them 
So they're all worked on during a certain amount of time, but some of them come together close to that period, right. or, and then some of them are, like, are from like long ago. Okay. So I never try to, I don't know, I like think about Radiohead, like they do that a lot. Like they, they came out with an album that has a song on it that has been through their whole... Right. Yeah, I, a friend of mine pointed that out to me, that they do that. that okay. they'll, they'll sit on a song for a long time, and it's like, why, why not do that? Right. Like, if you have other ones to choose from and this one doesn't feel finished, then just uh, let it keep going. But anyways, this song that we just played, yeah, kind of makes you, you feel good as a new one. Do so you have, like, freshy. a whole stack of unreleased stuff or just maybe just snippets yeah, there's, of stuff? Yeah, there or? are, like, uh, I do create, like, um, the songwriting process is kind of, like, whatever I come up with wherever. So, like, if I pick up, uh, there are certain things that I can do to, like, uh, to get my creative juices flowing. So right. like, uh, if I play a different guitar, like if I just like pick up some, one of my friend's guitars, I always find that like, just hearing that different sound makes me want to mess around and find a, something that sounds cool. Right. Yeah, so uh, there are things that do that to the writing process that make, like, that make you... Uh, Jump start that, your... That gets it going, but yeah. then, yeah, yeah. No, it sounds great. I, and, yeah. I, and it's funny because have you played it out a lot? That. Um, how I played out a lot. Um, the song. Oh, the song. Yeah, yeah. We play, we've we've uh, played it out a couple of times. Okay. Just kind of like teased at and just kind of messed around with it. We're like kind of like uh, approaching like sort of like a looser phase where like it's like less uh, like expectations of like like what we uh, of what the song's gonna play. Like so like if we go to a gig and like somebody's playing something kind of differently, like we don't even bother to be like you know that didn't work or whatever, it just like, that felt nice, so I don't know. Basically, we're just like kind of goofing around with the new songs live and in rehearsal, uh, and that's how we're, ex we're kind of having fun with it. Yeah, yeah. and it's uh, interesting that you're saying we, and uh, when I first uh, yeah. met you, you were Andre Costello and the Cool Miners, which was basically just you. Like, I, I guess the first uh, yeah, EP yeah. was just you, mm -hmm. and then you were playing with a couple people, but uh, this band that you have now, you've been together for a while, right? Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been together for, um, I don't know, like four years? Four Jay? years, yeah. About right. Yeah, about <laughs> <laughs> four years. Uh, um, and that's the longest you, the, uh, the Coal yeah. Miners, right? So the band is called Costello and the Coal Miners, and that is because of me playing by myself and I wanted to make it sound like I had a band, kind of like Gorillaz did that, mm. where like it's just the one dude from Blur, and like, so I thought that was cool. Oh, it's like okay. you know, like with the you know with modern technology, you can like record track for track by yourself, make it sound like a band, and then why not just pretend that it's a band? So I kind of did that. And then also, so that would allow for the the idea of like if I had a band behind me, it still wouldn't just be my name. And then also, if it was by myself, you could also call it. Uh, like think of the cool miners as like the notes that I'm playing. Hmm. Does that make sense? You kind like, of like yeah. minor notes. Oh, okay. My uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool miners. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Now, because when I first saw your first uh, album cover, there's three people on mm -hmm. it, and I'm like, wow, this is weird that they all look alike. But then you, when I asked you, yeah. you're like, they're all you. They by were all me by different artists. Yeah, so. I, I three of my friends I went to Art Institute with uh, Steph Neary. Uh, Nate McDonough and Andy Scott. I gave them all the same photograph, and uh, they all just drew cool. it. It was it was hysterical. That's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, and then I got a band that the bass player actually looked like me. <laughs> I like hired my roommates to play my in my band. Uh, Cynthia Thomas and Mike Parada. Cynthia played drums, and Mike was on bass. And uh, that was like the original three piece lineup, and it worked out perfect because on the album cover there were three faces. But uh, Cynthia is, was a, a girl that didn't have like facial hair, and so like it was kind of it was like yeah maybe it is them. And then there's like you know this the <laughs> this girl playing drums, like just like big grin. It looks nothing like me. Yeah. Um, oh, well, yeah. it's interesting that. Uh, but uh, for the band that you have now, it seems like you're tight. You trust those guys. And yeah, yeah, you know. definitely experiencing some uh, some synergy. Nice, nice. Uh, in your personal life, I know you are, uh, you work for the library. I do work for the library. And I yeah. asked you today if you were a librarian, and you said, no, you're not a librarian. No, I'm a library assistant. But uh, <laughs> as far as like uh, the Dewey Decimal System, do you know it? 
Oh, uh, yeah, no. Do you? I, I, uh, no, I okay. don't have to. Because uh, yeah, we you don't, don't have to it. anymore, yeah. right. It's all digital. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And so uh, you go into schools and you came into my school and it's, it's wonderful what you do with oh. kids. Yeah, you definitely. Know? It's great. But there's something funny too that I gotta tell you uh, go that I learned. Uh, the Dewey Decimal System, they use, uh, that was like, you know, like a numbering system so you find your book, you know, alphabetically um, or by subject. Yeah. I don't know it that well. Yeah, by right. genre yeah, or... Yeah, okay. Uh, but now, uh, well anyways, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh uses the, uh, um, what's the other system? Uh, oh yeah, the Library of Congress whole number. And I'm wondering if I should even tell you this, uh, but like, uh, if it's like a good joke because I work at the library, if they'd be like, oh, why did you make that joke? But uh, the religion section is under, like, I, I'm not joking, it is under BS. And I have to, every single person they say, like, where is it? And I go, under that's under BS. And they go, or they go, <laughs> what? Well, yeah, well, really, where is it? And I'm like, no, BS. And that's exactly what happened. I asked my coworker, I was like, hey, where's religion? Because I didn't know where it was and a patron was asking and he was like, oh, it's under BS. And that guy's always joking and I was just like, <laughs> there's a patron right here. She wants a Bible. Come on. Yeah, but anyways. Pretty good, that's funny. You can cut that out. No, I won't. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate you coming, man. This it's means a lot to me. Here. Yeah, and uh, you're gonna play another new song. Uh, An essay. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah! Performing another new song, once again, here's Andre Costello and the Cool Miners with NSA.
I am here with Margaret Welsh, who is the music editor for the Pittsburgh City Paper. Thanks for coming, Margaret. Thanks for having me. And how long have you been doing that uh, job? Um, I started about a year and some change ago, so and how, February before last. And uh, what are your responsibilities? Do you? Well, I, I basically curate the music section. Um, so sometimes, a lot of times, that means writing things. Um, it's a lot of editing of other people's writing, mm -hmm. finding people to write articles, and um, just kind of doing all that kind of nitty gritty stuff. Like organizing it. Right. Yeah. Yes. And mm -hmm. how do you like it? Um, for the most part, I like it a lot. It's fun. Um, it's kind of fun to, because I've been there for about six years in various oh, um, really? different ways. I was the listings editor before. Um, so I kind of went in already knowing the ropes a little bit. Um, right. So it's it's definitely kind of fun to have. I have a lot of freedom there, and um, it's like a really great staff. So cool. It's it's a good experience. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And do you? Uh, I, I'm, you're exposed to all kinds of music, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And do you, with that kind of responsibility or that kind of job, do you ever get sick of it? Like listening, you know. Sometimes there, I would rather do anything besides listen to music. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I have to review, it's weird because. I like, you know, I listen to music all day, but if I have to write about something, I procrastinate listening to it. I want to listen to something else. Um, right. So, yeah, it does get a little bit uh, tiresome. It's, you know, the same as with any, any job, job, I guess. Yeah, but, sure. Yeah, sure. you know, there's a lot of music that... Um, there's a lot of music out there. <laughs> there's we, a, there's lot. a lot of people producing music, so it's a little. Right. It's a yeah, little there's little a lot of great sometimes. music. There's a lot of bad music. Yeah, so. there's a lot of very mediocre music. Right. So, <laughs> so we're going to get into a segment I call First Last. Uh -huh. And basically, it's going to give me what kind of music uh, you grew up with and you are into now. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yeah. Cool. Uh, the first album you ever bought? Well, I, uh, you know, I had a lot of music in my life growing up. Um, but the first thing that I remember buying was um, Beck's album, Odele. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw him on the Grammys performing Where It's At and it completely blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, I didn't know music could be like this. Um, so my family didn't even own a CD player at the time and we got a CD player somehow and then bought the CD and wow. so. And that's not his first album, was it? No, I think it was maybe his third or third, fourth yeah. or something. Yeah, but it was his breakthrough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Where It's At. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still listen to it? Um, like, sometimes. Yeah. yeah he, Beck was my one of my favorite artists for a long time, and I kind of got tired of his what he was doing after a while, yeah. but he got he a seems, little... He seems to be coming around, yeah. interestingly enough. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll still... You know, Pop break it, it in. Out. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, the last album you bought, which is kind of a loaded question because I don't know, do you no. need to buy albums? I don't buy much music. I'm not really a big collector in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the last thing that I purposefully acquired yeah. was the new Slip 7 inch that Mind Cure Records just put out. Okay. Um, do you know Slip? They're like a local. Uh, sort of Black Flag esque. Yeah, band. I, I think um, I've heard of them. I think through you, because mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. were you were like really into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they so. just put out a seven inch, cool. a new seven inch. So, um, and I, I bought a tape recently from an artist, um, Try the Pie from San Jose. Wow. So that's so my you're last couple things. You're getting real obscure here, Margaret. I yeah. love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your favorite album of all time. Um. If that's possible, I know that's I, I, a. I mean, obviously, that's a hard question. Um, yeah. I think that well, my go-to answer for a long time was the White Album. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now I would say it's um, Leonard Cohen's The Future. I've been, uh, I Le Leonard Cohen in general is like probably my favorite artist, mm -hmm. um, and that. So if I could just pick every Leonard Cohen album, that would be great. Uh, yeah. But um, did you ever get to see him? No, I've never seen him. I no. guess he's he, he rarely. He, a couple years ago, we started touring. Yeah, he never came here, obviously. But yeah. you know, maybe a road trip was in the yeah, works. Yeah, you know? someday maybe yeah. if he doesn't die. <laughs> he's a little old. <laughs> yeah, he is. But I heard the shows are great. Yeah, and yeah. he's still putting out records. So yeah, cool. And what what year did that one come out? That was uh, I'm blanking on what year, but it was the '80s. So it's okay. very dated sounding. Yeah. It's very synthy, and um, it feels like a very adult choice to me because it um, is something I would have hated when I was younger. Right. Um, I started listening to him when I was pretty young and that was very out of my realm yeah. of understanding, but now it's something that I cool. can enjoy. Cool. Uh, your least favorite or most disappointing album? Um, 
I tend to approach music with like as few expectations as possible mm -hmm. normally. Um, so I don't usually um, get disappointed by like an, an artist putting out an album that I don't right. really like. Um, but I do remember that when Taylor Swift put out her album Red, mm -hmm. um, I, I felt kind of like let down by that. Um, and it was kind of like a personal thing where it was like suddenly, you know, I was always defending her and kind of, you know, saying like, oh, all these men are jerks to her. And, and that was the first time that I was kind of like, maybe this is your <laughs> fault. Maybe you're the problem in all these relationships. Um, and I just didn't think it was like that great. You know, it wasn't a very uh, cohesive record to me. What about 1989? Uh, that I liked a lot more yeah. right off the bat. Um, I don't think it's like perfect or anything, but um, and I have come around to Red a little bit. I yeah. saw her on that tour. I did too. Yeah, and it was good. I was incredibly impressed. Yeah, especially with uh, the you know I've seen tons of shows. I've yeah. seen tons of stadium shows, but I was just like uh, kind of surprised that I would enjoy it because mm -hmm. I had to take my daughter, uh -huh. you know, kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah, I thought. Thought it was fantastic. Yeah, actually. I was yeah. sitting. I remember I was sitting in the same section as um, Scott Mervis from the Post Gazette, and we were both just like, "This is amazing." <laughs> so yeah, cool. it was fun. Yeah. Uh, the first concert you ever went to? Uh, you know, this is an interesting question for me because I can't. It's like I, it's not like a big momentous thing for me, so it's hard for me to remember what exactly really? it was. Um, live yeah. music was always kind of like in my life in some way or another, and yeah. it was a really. I was like older before I went to any like really big stadium mm -hmm. shows or anything like that. Um, I think it may have been this um, Christian pop artist, Rebecca St. James. Mm -hmm. um, so whenever I tell people that, they're just like, I have no idea who that was. Which so, I don't, but, yeah, you so, know. Um, Where was it? It was, oh, I can't even remember. I think it was at like a big mega church or something like okay. that. So. It was kind of a unusual like. <laughs> well, it, it, well, it's an unusual pick to yeah. begin with, but, mm -hmm. which is fine. But yeah. just it, it surprises me that you don't really remember. Yeah, you it's know? very. I yeah, I it's it's kind of like a you know everyone else has these great stories. Yeah, of, you know, going to see something crazy or something you know weird, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really. Yeah. <laughs> it's well, old next blur. time I ask you, make something up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the last concert you went to. Um, I went to see Lauren Hill last week. Oh, and that Mud was Hall. really yeah, yeah, that was really great. It was great, huh? I yeah, heard, were you there? No, but I've heard yeah. raves yeah, about it. Was it. Great. And probably fifty percent of the raves were that she wasn't that late. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the nightmare three hours waiting right. for a forty minute show mm -hmm. kind of thing. But yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 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 It was. She was. She was like an hour late. That yeah. was, which everyone was kind of expecting anyway. Most, and, uh, most artists are sometimes out yeah. an hour late. Yeah. yeah. So, That's cool. And it was great. Yeah. Nice. She really. She really killed it. Cool. Uh, the your favorite concert of all time. Um, I well, Joanna Newsom also in mm -hmm. Mun Hall last year was really really great. Yeah. Um, and but I think the the show that sticks out to me the most is um, Earth played at the Braddock Library a few years ago. Um, do you know Earth? No. They're um, sort of like a drone metal, not metal, but sort of just like a, a heavy band from Olympia, I think. Mm -hmm. um, sort of contemporaries with like Nirvana. Mm -hmm. um, and they just play very like dirgy kind of slow right. music. It was kind of all the elements that I would normally hate, where it was like a really long show, it was really slow, it was like really, you know, sl kind of a sleepy event, but it was just, they were really perfect, and it just kind of. That's the, at the Braddock Library, yeah. of all mm -hmm. places. Yeah. Because I've only seen a couple shows there through that Levi's festival that they oh, had yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And there were holes in the floor, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't know that they still had shows there. Well, this was, yeah, this was. Probably closer to that time. Yeah. Um, I know it wasn't related to any of that, but it was It was definitely probably five, four or five years ago at this wow. point. Uh, your least favorite or most disappointing concert? Well, I think that anything that would be really bad, any show that would be really bad, I would actually probably like because it would be memorable. So I think most <laughs> of the shows that have been, you know, my least would qualifies a least favorite are just forgettable. Yeah. Um, I know I went to see something that sticks on my, in my mind is I went to see um, The Sword a few years ago. Um, okay. They're like a metal, sort of like a stoner metal band. Yeah. And it was really boring. And I like was like 
texting my friends to say like, hey, you want to come pick me up? Yeah. And I just like left all my other friends there. And so, I mean, you know, just kind of things that, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And it seems like you have a really deep, eclectic knowledge and taste in music. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it's interesting because half the bands you're mentioning, I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah, well, there's so much music, you know, it's kind of, uh, but, yeah. uh, And with your position, you mm -hmm. know, it's just like you probably just hear all kinds of stuff. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, any favorite thoughts or experiences about Pittsburgh? Were you born here? Yeah, okay. I, I've lived here most of my life. My family lived in Kansas for a few years, but mm -hmm. otherwise I've been here. So for me, you know, it's, it's, you know, when you're in a place for so long, you don't really see it the way that other people do. Right. Um, and, you know, every once in a while I have that glimmer of like, oh, I'm really taking this city for granted in some ways. But I mean, this is the place that I, learned about music and started going to shows and um, got involved in all of that. So that's right. special to me in that way, I guess. Kind of just all of that is my, my answer for no, that. No, that's a perfect yeah. answer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it is hard. It's a really rough question because, especially people born here. Yeah. And it's like a lot I get. I love everything about Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. You know, how can I narrow it down yeah. to anything? So, mm -hmm. uh, no, that's a perfect answer. Are you from Pittsburgh? Yeah, I was born here. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. grew up in... Uh, Crafton, mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah, I, I've lived here all my life and yeah. I love it. And, mm -hmm. and you're funny, it, it's funny what you said, uh, you take it for granted, mm -hmm. you know? So I try, like when I'm driving home from work every day, I'm a, on the West End Bridge and I just try to look over at that skyline. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot not appreciate it. It's yeah. amazing, you know, so. so. Well, I appreciate you coming. Yeah, thanks for thanks having so me. Thanks so much, Margaret. Yeah, cool. Yeah! Finally, the boys take us out with the lead-off track from their 2015 full-length debut off Wild Kindness Records, entitled The Rattling Arcade. Give it up for Andre Costello and the Cool Miners with Virgil. <laughs> Virgil King with white golden hair Folks didn't seem to care
Thank you all so much for tuning in. I want to thank Andre Costello and the Cool Miners, Margaret Welsh, Jay Vega from the Wilderness Recording Studio, and Dan Yost from Just Records on Sound, Giorgio's Pizza up the road on Western Avenue in the North Side, and special thanks to Carl, John, Doug, and Eric, and everyone here at PCTV. Until yeah, next time, always remember to support Pittsburgh to music. Explaining things to you, yeah, we oh, have yeah. the way of explaining things to you, yeah, we have the way of explaining things to you, yeah, we have the way of explaining things to you, yeah, we have the way of explaining things to you, yeah, we have the way of explaining things to you, yeah, we have the way of explaining.